All right, so we left off um, talking about, um, you know, some common practices to make sure that you use and uh, some tips and hints. Uh, and now we're basically ready to start getting, na uh, getting started uh, navigating the packages. So as you'll see on their page, um, it is broken down into uh, the ARMA 1 sample models, the ARMA 2 sample models, the license data packs, and the Serrani community package. So for ARMA 1, uh, everything is in two zip files. You have uh, the APL zip and the APL SA zip, and they're broken down exactly like I mentioned earlier with uh, APL covering all uh, vehicles, animals, weapons, uh, and characters and APLSA covering all the buildings, um, the uh, buildings, terrains, um, and basically map, map ob objects, uh, so signs and trees and vegetation, stuff like that. Um, ARMA 1 also has the Serrani community package, which is the package that we received directly from BI in order to uh, create SMD Serrani and uh, edit the terrain. So if you, um, if you download that, what you'll find in it is basically just um, you know, the surfaces text, config CPP, uh, the sources uh, that you really need, uh, which is the Sarah Pew and um, the layers config, uh, and then all the data file, including the um, ground textures and uh, RV mats, etc. So um, then for ARMA 2, what you'll, you know, as mentioned earlier, uh, they're broken up into the SA and the, um, uh, you know, the APL and the APL SA zips. So APL uh, anims 1 and 2 are all the animations. APL uh, is uh, just APL is uh, the um, characters, animals, weapons, etc. And um, the SA is, uh, again, map content. Uh, the difference, though, is in ARMA 2, if you go into the SA and you go to maps uh, and you look at the individual ones here, it does not contain the files you need to actually edit uh, the terrains. Um, so there's no, um, there's no layers config, there's no pew, there is no... Um, uh, sat mask LCO or um, uh, but you know a bunch of the files uh, are missing essentially uh, to edit the actual uh, ARMA 2 terrains so um, and then the license data pack is um, an entirely different uh, package what it is is it's binarized data from the ARMA 2 series uh, or from the ARMA series uh, from uh, Cold War crisis all the way through uh, ARMA 2 combined ops in PBO files. So the purpose of this package is to clearly identify which game, and game data is licensed for public use and modification and what are related uh, conditions and requirements. So y when you're going through that um, data pack, uh, it's also broken up into, um, where is my data pack? No, oh, I didn't delete, I didn't download that. But um, uh, it's just all the PBOs. So you know, if um, if you don't have the game installs and you need to create a C C drive, uh, CA drive, um, or CA folder for your P drive, you can use those data files instead. If you need a texture and you don't have uh, a, a P drive, you know, you can use those textures instead. <laughs> um, you know, the condition being uh, with the data package. Um, that you know you pay attention to what the license is um, for the assets that you're looking at um, but again it pretty much follows this basic outline of creatures characters animals um, uh, vehicles uh, and weapons all under APL and um, vegetation and buildings all falling under SA um, so now you have an idea of uh, Oh, and actually, uh, um, for ARMA 3, it's handled entirely different. In ARMA 3, the sample models are um, automatically downloaded with your um, tools install. So for me, it's on my D, um, my D drive, uh, Steam Apps, Common, ARMA 3, uh, ARMA 3 tools. And 
there's the samples uh, under samples underscore F and it's got you know a, um, pretty basic stuff um, it's got uh, purpose-built test stuff um, so they give you one one object of uh, each you know uh, asset type and that's basically uh, set up is to be an example for you to look at and then create your own stuff. So you have animals, uh, they have the anims, I'm not sure what the anims have. Uh, um, a boat, car, character, fonts, functions, heli, house, lamp, plane, tank, weapon. So uh, that gives you basic outlines of what it's like to, um, or what the Arma 3 uh, models require that's different than the Arma 2 stuff. Um, so now you have an idea of uh, where everything is. Um, it's important to get an idea of the uh, different types of objects. So you know, as as it's broken down in these data packages, you have um, share alike and uh, just normal Arma public license models. So the share alike stuff is. More, uh, much more likely to be a static object, um, which are the simplest type of object, and it just means that you know they they aren't mobile. They sit in one place and they have um, they don't move. So um, the A two S M data A P L S A package uh, is pretty much all of that um, maps. Um, map objects, maps, and structures. Um, then there's dynamic objects, which refers to objects that interact with uh, other static or dynamic objects. And they can you know, either be move, driven, or can move according to user or game inputs. Um, most of the dynamic objects are contained in the APL um, data packages. Uh, and then I break down here specifically what is in each of the data packages. Um, you know, because they're broken down into each of the data packages is broken down into subfolders, uh, where you have uh, for the APL uh, the APL pack, you have air, creatures, root, config, tract, water, weapon, the wheel. So now that you're basically uh, familiar with both the data packages and the different types of objects, uh, static and dynamic, um, it's that's pretty much it for this uh, introduction to public data modding. Um, the next tutorial uh, in the group is um, is Public Data Modding 102, Intro to Model Lods, and the Static Object Functionalities. Um, so I'm going to stop there and uh, pick it up again uh, starting in on uh, the Public Data Modding 102 tutorial. Alright, thanks for watching.